player if you ever popped your collar, went fed to stack your Skrilla, or added easy as a suffix to a nickname for extra flair, you gotta tip your hat to Vallejo Z40. A slang and style innovator who's been around for many moons, Efezi has more than earned his signature Kango, toothpick, and low-hanging reading glasses immortalized in the pantheon of hip-hop legends. In this episode of Culturalist Theory, we're diving deep into 40 Waters' ocean of work to celebrate his legacy while ranking the pieces in his catalog. This will by far be our boldest venture in ranking yet since we have decided to break his mini series down into separate parts. The parts of these compilations can be streamed, downloaded, or physically bought separately, so they are distinct bodies of work. Solo albums only, no EPs or group efforts. Look, this list is already long enough. Now, without further ado, as E40 said, let's get it cracking like some broken bones. We start in the D tier. These are albums that have more skippable records than repeatable ones. When 40 did his interview with Shannon Sharp, he said that to stay relevant, rappers will have to turn with the times or get left behind. For all of 40's accomplishments and creations, one grievance that could be had with his music is that a portion of his albums are time capsules of trends. The chameleon strategy of blending into the zeitgeist is hit and miss. Like water, ironically, 40 shapes himself to most molds well, but other times he drowns us in work as filling as H2O. The first installment of the second block brochure trilogy is the most egregious example of these facts. Records like Chitty Bang with Juicy J and Ty Dolla Sign, Episode featuring T.I. and Chris Brown, and the disappointing collab with Trill E.N.T.'s Webby by any means are just drab songs you've heard thousands of times before, but more interestingly done by other rappers or 40 himself. On Got That Line, the usually inventive OG borrows Meek Mill's trademark high-pitched in notations, and on Candlelight, Light, the vibe is giving the worst of fat Gucci Mane. The most memorable moments are when Father 40 and Son Droopy bond over their love of rare rocks on Yellow Gold and Chippa's show-stealing verse on Ball Out. Besides that, take the last two songs, the motivational Money on My Mind and the meaningful Mike Marshall collab Home Again and thank us later. From 2011 to 2013, E-40 released eight solo albums and two along with two short, the two-disc history series. The sixth and final installment in the block brochure series feels like it suffered from creative malaise since the artist was gassing so hard for so long. E-40 can create balanced records with varying topics, flows, and beats. However, on what should be the major climax to this series, all we hear are mostly uninventive baller ballads like Champagne with Rosé in French Montana, tired trap raps like Pablo with Goo Wop and Trinidad James, and unimaginative club records like Penetrate with I Am Sue and Sage the Gemini. We're not laughing with the OG when he tries to resurrect Crump with Rep Your District, and he has better introspective records than Don't Shoot the Messenger or What Kind of World. There are slappers on here, of course, like Turn Up or Burn Up with Scheme and Problem, and Mob Shit with Cousin Be Legit. But the songs on here standing head and shoulders over others are the Smooth Smokers Anthem Put It In The Air featuring Mac Maul and San Quinn, and the menacing sequel to 40's Art of Storytelling from Day Shift. Now don't get it twisted, there are chapters of the block brochure saga that we adore as you'll see later in this list, but we'd be lying if we said we weren't tired of being welcomed to the soil. Federal is a strong introduction. It's an important album when recounting the history of Bay Area hip hop and trap music's origins. A nifty thing about this record is its source for street slang if E-40's claims to be the first to put them on wax are true. If you've ever heard the words popo for police, hella to substitute very, bootsy to describe something or someone janky, or going fed to say going all out, you have to cite Federal. Another unique tidbit is that E-40 was sneak dissing another Bay Area legend, Matt Dre, rest in peace. A few times on here like misgendering him as Andrea on nothing ass nigga, but let's fizzle any ire with the thizzle. In a similar vein as Brad Jordan's Mr. Scarface is back, Earl Stevens' subject matter and aesthetic on federal solely circle street life. Recounts of dope dealing days are delivered by an unpolished MC gripping the mic with Yola residue still under his fingernails. E-40's authenticity bleeds through the words on most tracks here so believability is no issue. It's Kane, not gold medal flower. But unlike Scarface who came in the game a refined player with a more conventional style, E-40 was still developing his unorthodox techniques. The problem isn't that he's not true to this, he's just new to this on Federal. He gets better as an MC as the track list rolls. While Drought Season is dope for explaining that facet of the powder pushing profession, and Rat's Head's third verse is a thrilling way to cap an anti-snitching song, the album doesn't hit its stride till track 3, the bossy, brawny title track Federal. After that, it's kinda hot and cold. 
old. We'd argue the only tracks that are rewind worthy are the storytelling ones. The freaky tale of Tangi 2, the fight or flight narrative on hide and seek, and the first hand parable of violence's cyclical nature in the hood on let em have it. We'll even throw in the thug motivational nothing ass nigga for those who need a bump to get up, get out and get something. We hate to break the hearts of any old heads who stacked a ton of fettuccine in the 90s with this as their soundtrack or any crack babies who were raised on this proto trap music but it's borderline disrespectful to E40's output to claim the product he made as a teen is still one of his best. His skills have consistently bettered as he's aged, he has said more enlightening things since Federal's release, and he's only relegated to the streets here. Plus, if you're still jamming Rasta funky style, then what the bumba clock? The crazy thing about Fonzarelli's 2003 album is that it's not an awful album per se. The game is there, the bars are tight, and the talk is still slick as oil. It just sounds so jarringly dull compared to Mr. Flamboyant's more eclectic work. Plopped right in the middle of the rise of snap and crunk music, and when the only ones moving units were M, Pimp Juice, and Us, E-40's breaking news sounds more like yesterday's blog post than a memorable headline. After 2000's Loyalty and Betrayal, a great album that embraces that enthralling West Coast sound, E-40 seemed briefly to be lost in the changing landscape of hip-hop or focusing his talents on appealing to the East Coast snobs who barely gave him props with his next two albums, Grit and Grind, and especially Breaking News. We don't entirely hate this choice because the best song here, I hope you get this kite, is 40 rapping like he wears Tim Bowes and fitted hats. This is his version of Nas's prison pen pal poem One Love, and it's done over a moving soul sample beat from Caviar and Overdose. Quarterbacking with the clip is a banger where Malice, Pusha, and Water rap like the pack won't move unless every bar is tight and the DJ Quick remix at the album's end is better than the OG. Yet he's rapping like he's got something to prove to the bacon, egg, and cheese eaters at the bodega on Hot, One Night Stand, and That's a Good Look, as well as the dreads and gold storing bowls with his second Little John collab, Anybody Can Get It. It's heartbreaking to hear a hero trying to earn the ears of those who derided his style most of his career, and it's frustrating that the magic Little John and E-40 would cook up later wasn't exactly ready yet in 03. Breaking news came before the album where 40 would truly catch his second wind after his strong 90s run My Ghetto Report card. There are hints of what greatness was to come with his rapping cousin Turf Talk making his first appearance with 40 on I Got That Work, a premonition of the great mob music they would make in the future, but breaking news wasn't right on time. In a 2012 interview on Shade 4 or 5, E-40 answered why he rapped so much. It's because he really has a passion for the art. That same year, E-40 released his first trilogy of records, The Block Brochure Parts 1, 2, and 3, all together on one day, March 12th. 60 songs were evenly divided among the three CDs. 40 Waters' professed love for rap leads him to flooding the block with work. It has proven overall successful for his hustle, though it has resulted in patches in his career where the dope isn't as potent. The first part of this trilogy is hands down one of the weakest in the series. It's sluggish in its pace, substantially uninspired in its subject matter, and some of the worst beats 40 has ever picked, a tragedy because his instrumental selection is typically impeccable. There are highlights like the smooth gangster grooves of Out of Town and Cutlass, as well as the raunchy Let's Fuck, featuring the the late great misses of Memphis, Gangsta Boo. There's also the pimp tight Raheem Devon assisted posse cut rolling, which is worthy of multiple spins. However, you're not missing out on much by skipping over this one. If there was one song you should check out on here though, it would be What Is It Over with Crooner J Banks, a haunting song questioning why brothers from the same hood commit fratricide so frequently. Released simultaneously with the first part of the series in 2014, Sharp on All Four Corners 2 fails to be as captivating as its predecessor, though its highlights are attention grabbing. Corner 2 is up tempo and lively with plenty of slaps for the soil, like It's the First, Street Sense, Jumping Like Mine, and Quit Hayden. There are also plenty of gems being dropped on Selling Dope Ain't Fun, the third collab between E40 and Mac 10 in his discography, and the bossy, bass heavy real game for a player, where 40 teaches how not to get caught lacking at the light. The album rides all the way through but leans too heavily on radio ready party music like That's Right with Ty Dolla Sign, Real Nigga with Kirko Bangs, and the bland baddest in the building featuring Dej Loaf. Sharp on all four corners too ends on a strong note with the best song on the album Give Me Love, the chic sampled record where 40 bounces on the beat with bravado. Overall though, this album is the definition of serviceable.
We've entered the C tier with E-40's 2018 album, his 26th overall. Aside from The Mailman, this is the shortest album in E-40's collection. Barely scratching above EP status, these 12 songs punch above their weight. Favorites on here are Ball Hog, Who You Talking To, One Night, and then the best song, When Life Shows Up, all featuring Hook Master, Stressmatic, Ty Dolla Sign, Kent Jones, and Mike Marshall, respectively. This album's cover, the first not to show the tycoon, features a definition for the phrase, Gift of Gab, showing that this is the kickoff for 40's latest series, The Definition. 40 has teased that he will publish a slang dictionary for years which has yet to materialize. We need that. However, he laces us with plenty to tie our shoes with on the Pots and Pans Man, the Pack Attack, and this second best slapper these days featuring Young T.O. Our gripe here is that this record is plagued with 40 trying to chase the success that his 2013 single Choices enjoyed by carbon copying the format on winning. That fails. Plus, Denny's sounds like Earl doing a parody of modern trap rappers than actually trying. This might seem minor, but with the track list this short, every moment counts, and if you throw in the collab with Problem Relax, that means one fourth of this album falls flat. Just like breaking news, Gift of Gab is the album that sets up the play for E-40 to score a home run when he's next up to bat. Now, speaking of baseball, the San Francisco Giants, Fonzarelli's home team, released exclusive bobbleheads for the Bay Ambassador in 2022. And if you've got one, know they're now collector's items. This album will grow on you over time the more spins it gets, though it suffers some of the same problems its predecessor Breaking News does. There are quite a few records here that will have to take a few plays to really get into, like the very fast paced groove Seven Much with Cocaine, the abrasive It's a Man's Game, and the unearthly end of the world. Others are instant wins like 40 attacking the mic and the industry on Why They Don't Fuck With Us, the smack talking on the thump and the slap, the surprise collab between Afro Man and 40 on the bluesy roll on and Keek the Sneak's second appearance on a 40 record popping up six years earlier on Hall of Game for the catchy bop womp womp. But as mentioned before, this was the middle of the South's rise and E-40's era of being peeved that he never had a source cover, so he's appeasing the South and rapping like he's in a cypher on West 120th and Lennox. What makes this different from Breaking News though is that it sounds more authentic. While walking through his catalog in a DJ Vlad interview, E-40 mentions two records here that went viral in different regions, the South and his native Bay Area. Those were Rep Yo City and Mustard and Mayonnaise. Rep Yo City is the ultimate crunk posse cut with 8-Ball, Bun B, Petey Pablo, and E-40 tearing the booth up while Little John hollers on the hook. This record also appeared on Little John's Kings of Crunk album and is so adrenaline jumping it'll make you proud to rep even a two-horse town. Mustard and Mayonnaise, a reference to Vogue Tires, is one of the most creative rap songs ever made about car customization. Finally, listen to the rare example of Efezi styling over soul samples on the epic Falling Rain as well. This record falls a bit short on the list because despite having some jams, it's super dated by its very early 2000s sound, plus 40 simply has better albums. Now we've reached one of the seminal series in Waters' career, Revenue Retrieving, a collection of four albums divided thematically into work shifts. This body of work contains some of 40's best and most slept on songs. Separating this large set of music into individual parts was mostly done to protect this string from ranking lower. Day Shift, simultaneously released with Night Shift in 2010, is 40 doubling down on the hyphy sound with up-tempo tracks that'll rattle the trunk and make the dreadhead shake like on Duck, Lightweight Jammin', Dim Boys, and Out of Control alongside Mr. Fab and them hood stars. But that's the minority of records on here because this is Fonzarelli's entry into heavy mob music era that would begin in Revenue Retrieving and extend up until the end of the block brochure. This is a derivative of West Coast gangster rap spawned by E-40 characterized as having sparsely produced, slow beats with deep bass lines, singular snares or claps, with minimal or no melodies while street themed raps flow. Excellent examples are Back in Business, Understands Me, The Art of Storytelling, I'm in the Room, and I'ma teach you how to sell dope. Day Shift has more to it than just murder music such as the sensual fuck you right with R&B artist Jay Valentine and one of E-40's biggest hits Bitch featuring Too Short which got a sick 50 remix and peaked at number 24 on the rap singles chart. Where Day Shift slacks is that even if you're a fan of mob or hyphy music, 72 minutes of it can be tiring especially when songs like The Weed Man, Got It, and Rick Rock Horns drawl on and on. Regardless, snatch up another example of Charlie Hustle bullying a soul sample beat on All I Need and follow the rules of life on you're supposed to and you'll be straight because the best shift has yet to start.
If Day Shift is a bit too long-winded in its attempt to entertain, Welcome to the Soil 5 is the opposite. With only 15 tracks running for less than an hour, there's a lot less filler here. 40 is spitting game like always, and the best appearances on another one loaded with them come on In That Cup with Meridian Mississippi's Mayor, Big Crit, and the King of the Ghetto, Zero. The Bouncy Countdown featuring 2 Chains and the Speaker Knocking All My Niggas with Danny Brown and Schoolboy Q. Frequent collaborators Be Legit and Mike Marshall slide on the relaxing breath of fresh air, Too Short and Water get it wet on When You Gonna Let Me, and Stressmatic and singer Jay Banks help close the album with the reflective track off the block, the best song on the album. Similar to Welcome to the Soil parts four and six, Five is heavily geared to the clubs or the functions. It might be contradictory to put Five so much higher, but we're more partial toward records like I Be On My Shit, Plush, and All Y'all more so anything on four or six. Five just rides better on a full playthrough, even if Mr. T, I'm Pushing, and Project Building could have been clipped. Leaving C tier, we enter B with E40's second album from 2010. The Night Shift, part of the Revenue Retrieving series, edges out the previously mentioned releases just by its sheer number of jamming songs and being slightly more cohesive. Like on Day Shift, E40 goes all in with the rap subgenre he's spearheading. The mob music is magnificent on the cook-up classic Over the Stove, the high-octane Nice Guys, and the Messy Marv collab He's a Gangster. To turn down the testosterone, Bobby V slides with water on stilettos and jeans to Mac the ladies and gospel singer Lenny Williams harps the hook for the best advice Big Mama ever gave let go and let God but other than those reprives this is a solidly menacing album the songs are as mean as their titles knock them down music train to go prepared streets keep calling and the server the letdown here is that the usual show stealing sugar free fails to rise to the occasion on attention show me what you're working with is one of the worst joints from 40 and short and ah shit is just that it also suffers from the same long windedness that day shift had snatch the jazzy fate produced ballers anthem can't stop the boss featuring snoop and too short from the track list and add it to your playlist though Riding high from the new mainstream notoriety he received from the success of my ghetto report card, 40 returned in 2008 with his 11th album stacked to the tilt with big name features and the hottest producers of the moment with Little John at the helm. This was his last release on BME and Warner Brothers before going independent again. While not as impactful or potent as its predecessor, the Ball Street Journal has many highlights even if it does reek of late 2000s pop rap at times, a sound that hasn't held up well. Opening with the hard-hitting diggable planet sample based ambassador produced by rick rock 40 attacks the mic while following the formula that worked on ghetto report cards opener yay area as the record progresses we get jams like i'm on one got rich twice and 40 water where 40 is light years ahead lyrically and the beat fits like his rolled up beanie jr rodham's production and the game and snoop's contributions cause the emotional pain no more to get multiple spins t Payne's beat and hook for give her the keys means we have a forever summer smash and little john provides the backdrop for 40 to shine on the get up and grind anthem hustle the weaknesses here as mentioned before is that some of the records didn't resist time's erosion those are breaking ankles a snap song with shawty low wake it up a pop ballad with akon and hood boy a drummer boy production with sammy on the hook that would have been better suited for soldier boy before he became big draco However, Earl is another Little John and E-40 collab from this era that sounds just as hard as the day it came out. An absolute banger that demonstrates E-40's commanding voice on the mic and why his style was able to catch on so well in the South. This rowdy record is the best on an album where 40's attempts to keep up with the youngsters result in a timely album, but not a classic. Back to the block brochure series we go. While many of the albums in this series rank lower on this list, the two remaining contain some of the illest music in Earl's discography. I didn't come up under Dr. Dre, I came up under me, Fonzarelli raps on the lumbering opener Jealous. This thundering song produced by Rick Rock has 40 spitting with Venom, showing there's still a chip on his shoulder after all these years of not getting enough of his well-deserved props. He then proceeds to tear it up on this heavy-footed album. Alongside Kendrick Lamar and Son Droopy, 
trophy, 40 goes barbarian on catch a fade, demands respect on gargoyle serenade, and doesn't let up with I'm on his top. One of the most frustrating things about 40's catalog is that guests that we're sure he has in the Rolodex usually make one-off appearances on his albums. For example, Warren G and 40 have real chemistry on what happened to them days, Raheem Devon and him make magic for Salute You, a tribute to all the intelligent black women that's sexy, and the West's answer to the woo, Hieroglyphics needs more records with Fonzarelli than just 40 and Hiro. These are some of the best songs on here, but it's frustratingly bittersweet seeing the energy didn't continue. It's especially irritating that Kendrick and 40 have yet to meet again on wax since Catch a Fade. Regardless, the smooth sounds on what you smoking on featuring Cocaine, Snoop, and the Dog Pound, the motivational track Be You with Too Short, and the sensual Pussy Loud with Portland's OG Cool Nuts will mellow us out. As mentioned before when discussing Federal, 40 is only getting better with time, aging like the Earl Stevens wine he peddles. His run in the 90s might contain some of his best work, but sporadically throughout the 2010s, Earl was dropping hits and very impressive albums. Book two of the two disc D-Boy Diary series is a 2016 release that might have slipped under the radar, but it's a slapping project with a lot of energy. Bring Back the Sideshow with Mr. Fab and Neff the Pharaoh makes you want to do donuts broad day in an intersection. On one makes you want to bully someone bigger than you and you might end up going 100 miles per hour when highway with be legit hits there's some redundancy here with money featuring mozzie and j-rock and get money or get lost both being here but heard in a vacuum there's still records that catch your attention favorites on here are sick out here where 40 son provides a dope beat and hook while his pop spits game the cocky tracks what it's gonna be the self-congratulatory tycoon plus the player made waiting on a play there are cringe-worthy moments where 40 tries a bit too hard to show he's still the cool uncle, e.g. thank you, military time, and flash on these bitches where little B the bass god does the opposite of bless us. Yet at 21 tracks long, the aforementioned songs are tiny blemishes on the page when reading the final entry in the D-Boy diary. Throughout his career, E-40 has spit many bars proclaiming himself to be your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. His 98 album, The Element of Surprise, might be the best example of why he's not only beloved by heads, but respected by revered lyricists. For example, LA native and cold MC Murr stated that this CD is the best E-40 album. On this double disc, 40 Water is completely unhinged lyrically, saying the wildest things in the densest ways possible. I got more bass in my rock than Third Eye Blind, he spits on the triumphant closer one more or gin. That might be an allusion to his Yayo selling days, but that applies to the bravado in his voice on the raspy dump bust blast, the ballerific tribute to the future 45th president Trump change, and money schemes where he and J.O. Felony scream their love of cream. Speaking of 40's drug dealing past, the classics Hope I Don't Go Back and Zoom are the anchors of this album. These essential E-40 songs about wanting to turn away from pushing powder are also painfully autobiographical about life in treacherous Vallejo. There are rappers who are witty with words, have commanding deliveries, and or captivating subject matter. Then there are rappers who literally rap in a way that is nearly impossible for an untrained person to do. E-40's scattershot flow and lyrics layered with humor, metaphors, and similes spat at a million miles per hour put him in the same skill level as Busta Rhymes, Mystical, Busy Bone, and Twister. Normal people can't rap like he does on the title track, Personal. You gotta be special. The element of surprise is noteworthy not only for having some of e 40s wickedest wordplay, but it's also the album where his trademark ad-libs were introduced, like the famous ooh. As incredible as his talents are on this album, does that make it good? Certainly. You'll be fonder of it after every play, but the LP is definitely bloated, and it's for those who are hip-hop heads who are deeply into intricate lyrics with the left-field delivery. Even if it is one of the better double albums in hip-hop history, as some 40 fans claim, flashing, mayhem, and to the beat are textbook filler. There are so many other great records here, though, like the erotic Jump My Bone, the stoner song Broccoli that coined the nickname for weed before Kodak Black, the Battle of Sexes Lieutenant Roasterbotch, <laughs> where Silky find clowns E-40's obesity, the Master P assisted back against the wall, and the vengeful on site with Sibo who kills it like on trade war stories. All of these and more bangers appear on the second disc, the overall stronger half of Element of Surprise. There's a great album here upon closer examination, but 
but it's tainted by its late 90s maximalism and its sound and for those who are not into analyzing lyrics from avant-garde gangster rappers. The element of surprise might make someone new turn the water tap off rather than on. E-40 has only had four albums achieve gold or platinum status. The element of surprise was one of them moving half a million units earning a gold plaque in 1998. Now let's swerve into the A tier. Because the element of surprise is such a seminal and cherished double album from e -Feezy, we're going to make the strongest case possible for these next two discs. After the last three episodes of the block brochure ended on a whimper, Fonzarelli took two years off to come back with a bang in 2014 with Sharp on all four corners. Corner one was the resurrection of 40s artistry after his 2010 started strong with the Revenue Retrieving series, but got shaky around 2013 with many subpar block brochures. This album contains the platinum selling single Choices, which became one of 40's biggest songs since Tell Me When To Go in 06, peaking at number 43 on the rap charts. It became so big that he released a remix for his home team, Golden State Warriors, and has since tried to remake it several times like winning off Gift of Gab and Uh Huh on Book 2. While this infectious jam might be the one to pull you, there are a plethora of gems here. Programming, Knocking At The Light, Money Sack featuring Boosie, and Same Since 88 with Too Short and Be Legit. We'd argue all of these would come out victorious in a sound clash against the best get money or gangster raps on Element. 40 can get the party started better as an OG than he did as a youngin since Playa featuring VT and Red Cup with T-Pain and B.O.B. make you want to get up and groove instantly, something that Element of Surprise lacks. Even if you're not from Vallejo nor step foot on Magazine Street, you have to appreciate the track 707 where 40 recounts the history of Bay Area hip hop. As for introspection, 40 lightly covers those bases with three jobs, a dedication to the full-time hustlers that also recounts his struggles, and family with Otis and Suge remixing Genuine's differences. Corner One is an overall consistent project throughout that tilts slightly higher in rank than other projects released in his catalog because of the sheer number of jams it has. Two years after releasing his two-disc Sharp on All Corner series, 40 bounced back with another duo in 2016, the D-Boy Diary series. Full of high-tempo club shakers, gravelly mob music, and moments of soul-searching, Book 1 is a riveting ride that blows Book 2 out of the water. Fonzarelli sounds as viral and lyrical as he did on Element of Surprise when he goes off on Stack to the Ceiling, Fired Up, and the Rick Rock produced Slapper Hundreds. There are obvious hits that fell through the cracks at the time, like the catchy Kent Jones collaboration gangster song, the Jazzy Faye and Be Legit Assisted Savage, which is ready for primetime radio, and the uplifting Somebody with crooner Rico Barino that's made for summertime cookouts. This might be cliche, but book one is a page turner from front to back. No, this album doesn't have a hope I don't go back or zoom like element of surprise, but press play on had it in a drought, blessed by the game, and made it out, and you'll hear he's still talking mathematics if you add it up. Let's keep it real. The Block Brochure series is, by and large, a stain on 40 Waters' remarkable catalog. Most of this six-volume series fell by the wayside in our ranking, but Welcome to the Soil 2 is the diamond in the mud. Throughout our research, we never learned how 40 chose which tracks would go on which of this multi-volume series. We're inclined to believe it wasn't a random song selection after listening to Soil 2, a record that is lyrically sharp, banging with its beats, smooth in its transitions, and eclectic in its themes and sounds. With bangers like the gold certified single Function featuring Problem, YG, and I Am Sue, soulful and melancholic music like This Is The Life with OG producer Sam Bostic, a pure panty dropper trying to get it with T-Pain and Twista, and mob music like The Other Day Ago with Spice One and Selly Cell, 40 belts exactly what it is on the chorus of This Shit Hard. We don't have time to go super in depth for each album here, but you need to hear both both records with Tech 9 Scorpio and Zombie, the flush collab with Andre Nicotina on Memory Lane, the rear view shaking Red and Blue Lights, and Sell Everything, both produced by Rick Rock. Once again, we don't know exactly how 40 composes these gargantuan albums, but we assume he wanted to make a spiritual successor to 99's Charlie Hustle, with the album sampling lyrics from Ballaholic on the intro I'm Laced, and the drums from Fucking They Knows on Street Nigga. Before we run on too long, much props to the Queen of the Bay, giving herself her own crown and flowers on the inspirational closer I know I can make it. This album deserves praise for its cogency but loses to his next album in E40's timeline just because it is sheerly monumental. 
On the song Rain On My Parade from E-40's 2019 LP, Practice Makes Paper, Berkeley rapper and fellow Loyola University alum like this writer, g Easy spits, I grew up on my ghetto report card. In a DJ Vlad interview, E-40 himself says that he could perform songs from only this album for the rest of his career and the crowd would know every word. For rap fans coming up during the rigid regionalized era of hip hop, they could be forgiven for not knowing this was E-40's second breakthrough album after 95's in a major way. At this time, 40 was doing interviews and being asked how he felt about being labeled a new artist. After releasing eight albums independently on his own sick-witted records in conjunction with Jive Records from 94 to 03, 40 inked a partnership with the reigning king of crunk. He inked a two-album deal with Little John's BME imprint with backing from Warner Brothers. The two-year break after dropping the mid-breaking news, the Midas touch enjoyed by Little John's presence on records at the time, and the big marketing dollars allotted by BME's budget culminated in 40 Waters My get a report card to be one of the biggest albums of 06, eventually being certified gold by the RIAA, platinum in the Bay Area streets. The record is groundbreaking because it brought to national attention the sounds of the Bay Area's hyphy music and the region's unique culture in its music videos, imagery, and shows like MTV's Welcome to My Block. E-40 has three platinum singles as a solo artist and two of them come from this album. Tell Me When The Go featuring Keek The Sneak is the thumping breakout record that put hyphy in the mainstream. It still goes decades removed from its time. The second single, You and That, featuring T-Pain and Candy Burrez is still sultry, catchy, and a reliable party rocker. These two Little John produced records propelled Report Card to the top of the charts, but other songs with other producers made the grade as well. Rick Rock shares the declarative opener, Yay Area, the dreadlock shaking, Do Your Head Like This, and the pure adrenaline on Go Hard or Go Home. E-40's Day One Studio Ton crafts the slapping block boy, and Bosco provides the backdrop for the salacious Just Fuck and then, paradoxically, the gospel guided Happy to Be Here. All the aforementioned have 40's veteran pen lacing the track lyrically and the features hold their own. While it can be argued that 40 has surpassed this work artistically several times in subsequent releases, he has yet to have the stars align so well on one project. That X factor is what puts Report Card in the top 10 because records like White Girl, I'm the Man and Gimme Head would definitely lower the GPA. Out with the old and in with the new. Or should I say in with the old and out with the new, says the OG on the eponymous track E-40 from this album. This balancing act 40 does being the coolest uncle still ripping the mic is applaudable on many of his 2010 projects, especially on Graveyard Shift. Released with Overtime Shift on the same day in 2011, Water refines the best elements of my ghetto report card on the final two installments of the Revenue Retrieving series. Thematically, Graveyard Shift channels the baller excesses and paranoia that plagues the minds of hustlers on the block 24-7. On the menacing minimal opener Barbarian, Charlie goes beast mode rapping if it wasn't for the water, the rap game would be dry, while his son Droopy handles the gravelly hook and laces the beat with the loop from an obscure old film. 40 reveals the world view of a full-time grinder on the ice cold Sirius with T-Pain, as well as on the mob and title song, the hard body Concrete, and the bass heavy 43, which interpolates the beginning of the classic click cut bout your paper with the incomparable Be Legit. Of course, 40 got something for the function on here. My Shit Bang is one of the best songs to get the club rocking. That Candy Paint with Bun B and Slim Thugger is peak slab music. Fried with Tech 9 and Marty James is for the turn up while you burn up. Plus the hard to find bonus track I'm That is just plain mean. There's also depth on this record when e Feezy and Mike Marshall team up for Trapped a commentary on the penal system, and the closer tough times with Bosco about the struggle. On the graveyard shift, E-40 buries all doubt he's a ghost on the west coast. He's actually the Undertaker. The classic 1973 black exploitation film The Mac starred Richard Pryor and Max Julian was filmed in Oakland, California. This film about the come up of the pimp Goldie only helped put the Bay Area on the map as one of the meccas in America for pimps, players, and hustlers. Hall of Game, one of the most beloved albums by 40 fans, is one of those albums that reinforces the Bay's reputation as home for the game spitters as much as the Mac did. There are innumerable memorable songs here. The first ever collab between Too Short and 40, Rapper's Ball featuring K AC still stands as one of their landmark joints together. Million Dollar Spot is full of swagger and is the best 40, be legit, and the incredible Tupac have sounded on a track together. I want to thank you, an ode to the underworld, and the story which has 40 living up to the title of Street Poet, both drip with soul and are packed full of rewindable bars. Things Will Never Change, an emotional introspective record, has some of 40's best writing. Using the same sample as The Way It Is by Bruce Hornsby in the range as Tupac's posthumous single changes, it moves you the same way as 
Machiavelli's version. It is eerie that the video for this song dropped five days after Tupac's passing in 96. As Forty has told the story in multiple interviews, he had no idea that Tupac utilized the same flip with a similar song topic, thus proving that Forty shared not only prolific output, but also a similar spirit as Pac's. While the beat selection isn't as spectacular as his third album in a major way, the disses to AZ on record haters are so scathing it probably made him say life's a bitch and Rashid Wallace probably heard a few boos from 40 fans in the stands during his time with the Portland Trailblazers. Growing up, a spiritual sequel to the great record It's All Bad from his previous album that also adds an adolescent droopy verse and Smebin both suffer from subpar production. Hall of Game is an album coveted with that mid-90s golden era West Coast sheen that is hard to describe but it still reverberates past its time even if some of its production has it. We have now entered the upper echelon of E-40 albums. Everything from this point out is S-tier supreme. All of these are what we would consider essential E-40 projects. If you had to trim down the element at surprise, but add more bounce to the ounce, you'd get Charlie Hustle's Blueprint. This album is endlessly rewindable and full of fat beats that exudes that West Coast charm. It's probably the most eccentric after its 98 predecessor with 40 screaming, screeching, burping, and making any noise the human mouth can in between spitting out of body verses. It's insane as if he's off the cane. From the outset, Charlie Hustle will have your head bobbing with LIQ, Ballaholic, and Get Bread with Joey Crack and Sauce Money, the new incarnation of the Fat Boys complete with a beat from Battle Cat. All of these are instantly infectious just as the funky, talk box infused records like Fuckin' They Knows featuring The Click and Borrow Your Broad with Be Legit R. Their storytelling on Duckin' and Dodging, a glorious Earth, Wind and Fire flip on Season, a follow up to Hope I Don't Go Back, subject matter wise, and an excellent first single Earl That's Your Life where E-40 bigs up himself and the accomplishments of his homie Too Short who provides the ad-libs. Because we've reached close to the top percentile of 40 albums at this point any little mistake matters. We would damn near have a classic if the last two songs Gangsterous and Brownie Points had been snipped since they sound like the weed carriers got paid by feature placements. But for bangers check no further than the bossy ghetto celebrity where E-40 booms on the mic like dynamite. Look at me featuring a hot boys the reason Kendrick shouted out 40 water on his like that verse and big balling with my homies the sir mix a lot remix that k-dot references on money trees is now a good time to mention that this is mr morale's favorite 40 album listen to tracks like mouthpiece or rules and regulations you can hear a bit of charlie hustle's dna and not only kendrick's choice of words but also schoolboy q's aggressiveness in the booth either way go watch the documentary that accompanied this album on youtube to get a deeper dive into the mind of the man there's a lot of great footage there showing the background of this project and the era that hip hop was in. Rawer than ever, I think I'm better than I was hella years ago selling tapes front the liquor store. If the remainder of this list doesn't convince you that 40 is getting better with time, heed those bars from the man himself on Fuck 'em from 2011's Overtime Shift. It seems like every time Fonzarelli dons a red coat on the album cover like Hall of Game, D-Boy Diary Book 1, Grit and Grind, and now Overtime Shift, it's a high probability that the record will be flames. The third installment of the four-part revenue retrieving series is by far the best and stands is one of 40's best projects ever. Yo, where do we start? Firstly, the track Born in the Struggle is E-40 embodying that same spirit that inhabited Tupac we mentioned earlier. Over a booming symphonic beat from Sean T, booking it with vocal samples from Dr. Cornell West, 40 powerfully paints the picture of surviving America's slums with Mike Marshall belting the chorus. It's epic. So is Tired of Selling Yola, the droopy produced record where 40 reveals the guilt and shame of Rock and Kane. Me and My Bitch, a song similar in vain to RZA's Domestic Violence or Kendrick's We Cry Together, is difficult to listen to if you've experienced familiar dysfunction, but great art should challenge you even if it scares you. The rest of Overtime Shift is packed full of jams with the same themes as the other shifts, but they've just executed much better and the sequencing is excellent. Flowing from Mr. Flamboyant to K11 to Drugs, then Hillside, followed by Guns, 40 grandizes his persona while illustrating the full view of coming up in Vallejo. The sentimental I Love My Mama and the Jake One produced Looking Back with Devin the Dude are also relevatory of who Earl Stevens really is. Overtime Shift is the only one in the series that is devoid of a song for the ladies, but Sugar T tears down the booth on the reunion record Click About It. 40 excels at making no syrupy R&B ballads from time to time, so that's why this very masculine album lands at number six, but we're more than glad E-40 put in the extra effort clocking in for the overtime shift. 
The interview where Water explains the title of his 2000 release must have been lost to time because after all our research, we, for the life of us, cannot find why he titled such a celebratory, jovial album such a strident name. If you know, sound off in the comments. Loyalty and Betrayal, like 99's Charlie Hustle, has that West Coast aesthetic but delivered in a more polished way with better mixing, beats, features, topics, and less outlandish ad-libs. On here, we get not one but two records with the late great Nate Dogg on the menacing Sinister Mob and the summertime slapper Na Na. We also finally get an appearance from Ice Cube as he goes back and forth with E-40 on Behind Gates, one of the most lyrical and thought-provoking records 40 has. If that ain't enough to show Cali is active, play the bops Lace Me Up with Sugar T, Like a Jungle with Cocaine, Nigga Shit with Mac-10, and Pop Your Collar with The Click. This album checks the same boxes as DJ Quick's 2000 album Balance and Options, a record that sounds exactly like the environment it's portraying. While it may be Pacific Coast in its aesthetic, 40 gets busy just just as well as anyone on the eastern seaboard. Check out To Whom It May Concern, a bar-heavy lamb based of the industry that has overlooked his pen game, something he has only done on a handful of songs like Fuck Em from Overtime Shift, Record Haters from Hall The Game, and Why They Don't Fuck With Us from Grit and Grind. The song To Whom It May Concern should be required listening for any aspiring rappers. Also note the long overdue but right on time second collab with Mystical on Clown With It, where their equally eccentric styles complement each other. The work 40 was putting in on this album makes it deserve of a top five placement. The Mailman is what E-40's debut federal should have been. We are counting this 93 EP as an album since it was reissued by Jive Records the following year as an album with eight tracks, and E-40 himself counts this as part of his 28 album long discography. Plus the records that are here are so integral to the tycoon story that it would be a crime not to include it. Captain Save a Ho, Practice Looking Hard, Balling Out of Control, Never Broke, and the title track are the records that finally broke Earl through and they all jam as hard today as they did back then. Captain Save a Ho in particular charted to number 94 on Billboard Hot 100 singles and in the top 20 on the rap charts, the first nationwide hit 40 had along with the Clicks Hurricane from the equally as good 95 Click album Game Related. Mostly produced by Studio Ton, with Mike Mosley and Sam Bostic only producing one record, the record has bass heavy beats with melodic synths that give it that unique laid back yet dangerous vibe. E40 weaves ghetto war tales on Bring the Yellow Tape and packs the dance floor on Where the Party At. Forty has mostly lengthy albums, but the conciseness he had on the mailman still allowed it to be densely layered with game-laced lyrics, catchy hooks, and captivating themes. It deserves this spot for the same reason my Ghetto Report cards deserves its 10th slot, its impact, importance, as well as its quality. We love the mailman, but we're standing on a ground at 40 didn't peak in 93, and more than 30 years later, he proved us right with his next one. 40's first album, Federal, dropped in November of 93. Fast forward 30 years to November 2023, 40 still standing, releasing his 28th project, Rule of Thumb, Rule One. A standing ovation is not enough to shower praise upon a rapper who has managed to maintain and elevate through that many decades. At this stage, 40's career can be compared to somewhere in between Young Jeezy's and Nas. He has arguably improved, if not maintained, his high pin game like Nas, but lacks the late stage accolades like the Grammys given to the King's Disease creator. His work is now only checked for by hardcore followers and doesn't chart as well as Jizzle's latest release, though that might be because he has long since chosen the independent route. But listening to Rule of Thumb after replaying the dope dealing details on Federal, it feels like watching an alternate ending of Scarface where Tony survives. The street hustler graduated to Kingpin and has since retired, boasting about big deals made on the golf course on A, then flexing his bocce ball skills and deep sea diving adventures off the New Zealand coast on GPS. But even at 50 six, the OG has game to give. Throughout the 23 tracks on the third part of the Definition series, which includes Gift of Gab and Practice Makes Paper, 40 spits wisdom like a vision without a plan is just a hallucination on the super lyrical opener Lifted. Hate comes with a plate on the bouncy Does That Make Sense? And to get real money it takes some practice on the game. These three fire joints were produced by longtime collaborator Rick Rock, who has five placements on here, all of which are dope, including the aspirational billionaire dreams and the menacing off that mob. The rest of the beats are made by others who may lack name recognition, but bring that distinct yay area flavor where E-40 glides like on the hyphy record Let Me Go with Short and Mr. Fab, the turf talk ready stop acting like a weirdo, and the slapping water featuring La Russell, a track that's guaranteed to turn up the function. As far as features, there are some usual suspects, but also some surprises. BG, fresh out of prison, has a standout verse rapping alongside Gucci Mane and Filthy Rich on the braggadocia high end. NBA Youngboy soulfully sings, 
things, then slides on the sincere get my life right, and Trey the Truth, trademark baritone sounds sinister on the short but sweet suckers. All of these tracks are wins alongside the party groove show me how to do it with OT Genesis, Zoe Osama, and G5, a track that feels fresh even if you've heard one like it before. There are parts of Rule of Thumb that feel like 40 is thumbing his nose at the crowd, such as the super up-tempo pressure which feels like a reinvention of 80s techno, plus songs like The Bay and Let Me Go might turn you off if you're not deep in NorCal culture. The album ends with 40 showing his age with Loving Somebody, a flip on the Teddy Pendergrass song where he celebrates family and friends, and renews vows with his wife whom he's been married to since he released Federal. This song is ready made for the aunties with bad wigs and uncles in silk suits the electric slide to at the cookout. The best records here are when 40 speaks his mind on social ills like on It's Complicated, I'm Just Spazzing, Get My Life Right, and Dose of Game with Mike Marshall of I Got Five on It fame. During an interview to promote Rule of Thumb with cousin Sway Calloway, 40 was asked his take on the controversy between D1 and Rick Ross where the former criticized the latter for gangster rap at a late stage in life. Forty's response was real. He said that the game is the good, the bad, and the ugly, and he drops ism in his music that mixes the mayhem with the medicine. The beauty of this album, you get lines like, give me my flowers in my garden, carry something tactical, give a nigga a beer, he'll take the whole case, and be an attorney, not stretched out on a gurney. Yes, there are moments of debauchery here, but the through line is life lessons and lyrics. These are grown man bars, and that's something you'll have to deal with. When Young Jeezy dropped his now classic Thug Motivation 101, there were some rap critics who didn't get it. They commented while he excels in his authenticity when discussing birds and bricks, his beats were banging, he suffers in the MC skills department. 10 years before 2005, E-40 went through the same thing. Early in his career, E-40 was plagued by criticism that his style was nonsensical. While the game he was spitting was flying over their heads, some flatly labeled Fonzarelli a whack rapper, such as the instance Biggie Smalls ranked him a 0 out of 10 and AZ said he didn't deserve to go platinum. But as 40 said himself in interviews, those who spun his records again, often after getting twisted, they realize they're hearing a genius. E-40's aesthetic is deeply dope boy and his rapping style is ahead of the curve, and a few records in his crate capture those two elements better than in a major way. This 1995 album was the one that put 40 over the top, becoming his only album to sell a million copies, a feat even more astounding since it was released on the same day as Tupac's number number one album, Me Against the World. It is championed by his fans as his magnum opus. They have a strong claim since there is more to glean from the lyrics upon every listen, similar to how another dope boy from Marcy Project's debut is. On the first song, Da Bumble, E-40 puts on a clinic on how to make crack rap interesting with him turning words like niggas backwards comparing a bulletproof vest to an apron, burning the duct tape on a brick, and ending by taking you from the streets to Switzerland. On Spittin', he does exactly that, drunken master style. He tears it up with Mac Maul, Spice One, and Tupac on Dusted and Disgusted, and on Bootsy, he coins a term for those who fake the funk. Before Jeezy saw so much white it hurt his eyes, E-40 was comparing his dope moving magnitude to that of FedEx on the bouncy, game-heavy Fed. All of these are great, but the singles shine brightest. Sprinkle me with Sister Sugar Tea is as catchy as a fish hook, and One Love is poignant prose for those in the penitentiary. In a major way, it's solid from front to back like the cook up in the pot on its cover, each song making you come back like coke clientele. Fans who argue this not being his number one is blasphemy have an ardent argument because we have no rebuttals other than 40 has elevated artistically and lyrically along with the game. Basketball fans who debate Jordan is the GOAT over LeBron will cite rings, stats, and impact, but their underlying bias also comes from many of them witnessing Mike's accomplishments in real time. LeBron fans will cite the same factors, but also argue the game now has changed since the 90s. Without arguing who is the true GOAT, E-40's lengthy career spans both eras. He's simultaneously Jordan and LeBron. If you say in a major way is number one, you're not off. But we find it even more incredible that in such a late stage in his career, the OG can still ball as hard as he does on this next album. On October 8, 2013, the U.S. government released the new $100 bill. These notes were labeled Series 2009A and featured a 3D security ribbon meant to prevent counterfeiting. 
colloquially known as Blue Hundreds, these new banknotes are some of the hardest to copy in the world. The rapper Earl E. Forty Stevens, born in 1967 Vallejo, California, a small town barely on the map, has had no less than an outstanding career that can teach us the key to success. From being raised by a single mother with roots from the most musically rich state in the Union, Louisiana, to being the original college dropout when he left Grambling in 87, to being a struggle rapper that everyone called whack, to selling Yola through the window bars then tapes out the trunk, to releasing multiple albums ranging from whack to crack, to reinventing himself multiple times over, to not only making millions but keeping them, E-40's greatest sprinkle of game can be summarized with this phrase, practice makes paper. Name a rapper who taught you more than me, my nigga. I'll wait. 40 says on the aptly titled GOAT from his 27th album. Shit, at this point we can't. After the 90s run, the ghetto report card and Ball Street era, the highs and lows of revenue retrieving and the block brochure series, and several other projects, E40 has made the most all-encompassing, adventurous, engaging, and deserving album of his stature in 2019. The veteran was 51 years old when this LP was released, and on this record, he goes toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not only with other OGs whose bars are tough, like Scarface, Method Man, Red Man, and Fabulous, but also washes the rookies like ASAP Ferg, Schoolboy Q, Sada Baby, T Grizzly, and others. Some might see this album chock full of star studded features like Chris Brown, Jeremiah, and Ty Dolla Sign and think 40's trying to go full pop. But this record was released independently on his We On The Grind label. It's more likely these collabs came from E. Feezy calling in favors than an A&R pulling strings. And how do these records sound? Excellent. On the single Chase The Money, 40 tap dances on the fast paced trap beat with Grace while Quavo and Roddy Rich hold down the hook. Over a flip of Q Sweats, Make It Last Forever from Hitmaker, Rose, Jeremiah, C. Breezy, and Fonzarelli craft a smooth song that makes us ask one question. Why wasn't this song a bigger hit? In fact, that's a question we ask about many of the records here because there are innumerable bangers here. The Eye of the Tiger sampling Made This Way has 40 flirting with still pushing peas, T Grizzly rapping like his life's on the line, and an epic Rod Wave hook. Keep On Gassing has Red Man ripping the mic, Met The Man styling on this, and 40 smashing it while Sam Bostic blows the talk box giving it that West Coast vibe with the what the album feel. The long overdue but right on time collaboration with H-Town Scarface lives up to expectations on Watch the Homies and the king of the boot, Boosie Badass, reconnects with 40 on the Sentimental Blossom, another powerful song. E-40's warpath continues as he goes to the D to match with fellow cocaine cowboys Payroll Giovanni and Sada Baby on a beat from hell of a for I Came From The Game, which is as cold as a Michigan winter. This record is a perfect balance of mob music with tracks like Wake They Shit Up or I'm It matched with introspective and game heavy records like Stay Down or Surroundings and then a dash of dance music like Ooh or Rain On My Parade. The only blemish on E-40's illustrious career is that after acknowledging his Louisiana roots and repping the Bay since the start, he doesn't have one bar mentioning the great Louisianan who came out of the Bay Area, Huey P. Newton, nor the Black Panthers. He makes up for that with two records here, Bet You Didn't Know and Facts Not Fiction. The first is a soul banger where e Feezy drops gems that'll get you out of a jam in Jeopardy. The second is Fonzarelli kicking knowledge like Nazir about all the great inventions and innovations African Americans have made but are often uncredited for. Earl truly covered all bases with this very broad album and knocked it out the park like Willie Mays. It's made even more incredible that he's in half a century old and still has more interesting things to say. The album works in the gym, the whip, the club, and the crib and has something for all moods. On his track I Had It In A Drought, E-40 said, keep it lit, keep it pushing, and keep it moving. I ain't a counterfeit bitch, I'm proven. There's a reason why the cover of the greatest E-40 album is molded after the series 2009A, The Blue Hundred. That's because many will try but none can copy or compare to E-40. 40. What's the definition of a hit? Making an album like this. Put that on something. I put that on a click. E40 is no doubt a West Coast legend, but there have been other major figures from Cali we've covered. Go check out a video on DJ Quick here and the ranking of exhibit albums there. Thanks for watching. It's your man CJ Williams. I'm out.